How you doing? Shalom. I'm doing, I'm doing my very best. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very so glad you, uh, you're calling in here. We made it. We both made it. Well, I almost called in and said, please let me wait until Monday because I've been up all night and haven't had no sleep. Oh, I've really? Excited. I've been excited. and, and But I, I just pray to Yah and ask him, please help me to get through this. This is just so important and it gives me a chance to encourage and witness to a greater crowd. You're listening to Fruit Bearers, a living Hebrew production provided by KingdomPreppers.org. I'm your host, Kingdom Prepper. This podcast will focus on the spiritual walk of those of you out there who are living the Israelite lifestyle, whether you were born Hebrew or Gentile. But more than that, it will detail how the faithful have been or are striving to be fruit bearers as they walk the path of righteousness toward the kingdom. Return to our next guest. My name is Melvina B. When I was a very little girl, to me the beginning of seeing is just recognizing that there is a creator. I call him God and Jesus, and that he really do exist. And I acknowledge that by speaking to him when I would step outside to go play. You know, especially on a beautiful day, if it had been raining or whatever, and a sunshiny day that allowed me to do this, I would look up and say, hey, God, you know, and I just remember that, I, and, and, and as an adult, I wonder, I'm 70, and I, and, and, and I think to myself, that was really something, because I truly was greeting him at the age of four and five and six years old, and you know, to have an awareness that he really is and that he really exists to me is a stepping stone to the desire of learning more about him. I didn't start learning scripture until I was 18 or 19 years old. I think I was about 19. Only thing I knew from going to church was heaven, hell, and that's about it. <laughs> I was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, March 16, 1949. And I was a kind, very kind little girl, always concerned, always trying to help others. But I grew up in a very abusive home. My father was an alcoholic. And mama, my mother was a good mother, but she tolerated so much of her dad. We saw so much evil. We 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 just we just saw so much from dad. He was the only child and he was abused as a child by his stepfather. My father had two years of college, very articulate, uh, always reciting poems. And so all of my brothers and sisters, including myself, are always complimented in the way that we are able to verbally express ourselves. I'm not seeing myself as anything special with that. But it's an advantage to know words because of how I feel about things and how I take to heart things and how I take others to heart and consideration in the things that they may be going through. And then with the gift of the words that I have, and knowledge of scripture. I can help, I can encourage. So 
had a very, very rough time coming up as a child watching and seeing and being abused uh, really by my father and my brother, my oldest brother. And I grew up, I got married when I was very young. I was 17. Our parents uh, both did F. David uh, allowing my husband and I to get married. And we were living on the Army base in Fort Huachuca, Arizona. And I noticed, um, and this was before even studying the Bible, it was just something about me that was so different, and it, it made me uncomfortable. The Army wives, they were a mess. Um, going with one another's husbands, and I'm viewing this, and 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 seeing they're carrying on, and then, uh, you know, the ones that so-called befriended me, they would come and want to run each other down and talk about one another. I never will forget, I was 17 years old, and this uh, lady named Veronica was angry with her friend Sandra, and they were both messing with each other's husbands, and they wanted to come and talk about each other to me. And at 17, my feelings and thought was, you guys are friends. I'm not going to say anything against either one of you. This is something that you two will have to work out. I like both of you. And you know, the next day I walked out my door, they were on their porch saying all kind of mean, ugly things about me and to me, yelling across the street. And they went against me, and I'm thinking, what in the world? I remember, you know, I saw so much evil there on the Army base. I remember distinctly, how could I ever forget, getting on my knees, asking God, Please make me like them. Because I didn't fit. It was just I didn't fit. And, of course, he didn't make me like them. But And I was young. Uh, you know, even though I was married, I, I didn't know too much of nothing. But I asked him to please make me like them. And as I grew up, when I began to probe into the scriptures, I realized that there was just no way that he would have considered a prayer like that. I started studying uh, when we moved back to Oklahoma from the Army base from Fort Huachuca with my oldest sister who's deceased over, uh, we would talk over the phone. And she would tell me the most beautiful things about the scriptures that I had never heard of in any church that I had gone to about the earth being renewed. She told me, she said, you know how you like apples, how you like to eat fruit, how, how you just love to eat. She said, the food then will even be different. And I'm thinking, how can this be? This is just something as much as mama kept us in church that I had never heard of. But it was in the Bible. It was in the Bible. And so she would spend time with me, and I'd do my housework and stuff before my husband came in because he was very abusive, and he would fight me and beat me up for, over just any little thing. And I knew that I'd better have the chores and everything done before he got in, and yet she was a comfort to me because that was a hope for me the things that the scriptures that I had never seen. And at this time, when we'd be talking on the phone, I wasn't looking into the scripture, but she was feeding me and giving me food for thought from the scriptures that she was learning. Everything she learned, she shared with me. Finally, um, after we had talked on the phone and talked scripture over the phone, I got the nerve to go to the creator in prayer and not really knowing what I was doing, I just said, Jehovah, I said, whatever your name is, please send me a Bible study. And I wanted one so bad, I didn't care if I got beat up about it or not, because I did. And 
I ask him, say, for instance, on a Monday night, for example, and the very next morning somebody was knocking on my door. I was in the kitchen, and my husband answered the door. And I heard the Bible study conductor give her presentation, and she asked him, do you think that there will ever be peace on earth? And when she said that, I ran to the door, and he stepped back. I said, are you one of Jehovah's Witnesses? He said, yes, I am. I said, I prayed and asked for a Bible study last night. Will you study the Bible with me? She said, sure. Well, anyway, I'll try to make a long story short. We studied for almost a year. I was able to get my husband to study after he'd beaten me one time too many, and I was going to go and uh, to Mount Holly, New Jersey, where my uncle was stationed, and just leave him and go up there. And he begged me that if I didn't go, he would go on and have Bible study with me. And so we were studying together. He was not sincere. Uh, I remember us being up in the in the bed, and he was reading the newspaper, and I had begun probing into the scriptures, and I had my Bible. And he turned all the way around in the bed and took both his feet and kicked me out of the bed onto the floor and just was cracking up laughing. And I'm thinking, why would someone do this to someone who's interested in the creator, who wants to learn his will and be a more righteous person, even though I was a good wife? And I asked him while I was crying, why did he do that? And he, he just said, oh, it wasn't nothing. I was just playing around or something he said. But he also took me to his mother, his parents, uh, shortly after we started studying and tried to humiliate me about studying. So it was obvious that Satan didn't want me to know nothing about the Bible. I didn't know anything about the Bible. I didn't learn anything in church. The thing about religious organization is that there are doctrines that they have that they expect you to live by, whether it's tithing and and other things. This particular organization believes that they are spiritual Israel and never learning anything about who I am, who the American Negroes, you know, are. None of that such a great disappointment when I found out. I was so bewildered to find things that were left out, uh, scriptures in the New World Translation that they replaced with a star and left out things like, I asked my Bible study conductor one time, well, what does fasting mean? Is it important that a person would fast to be a Christian? She told me, no, fasting meant nothing at all. You could fast if you want to. To listen to the full audio of this podcast or to download a free MP3 version, visit our website, kingdompreppers.org, by clicking the link in the description. And if you're striving to bear fruit for Yah and would like to be featured in a future podcast episode, write us through the site using the contact form at the bottom of the Live in Hebrew section and request a fruit bearer's interview.